Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Disruptive Investing. Why lucid headlines don't tell the real story. <laughs> what a headline. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> So Lucid announced their Q1 sales and delivery numbers, their best quarter for delivery so far. And when you read the headlines, it may sound really good. Great news for Lucid investors. Is the stock a buy now? And EV maker Lucid beats first quarter delivery estimates as price cuts boost demand. Yeah. Woo! Disclaimer, we're not financial advisors. Don't take our advice for anything financial unless you do your own research. Now, let's be honest here. Aren't most retail investors just headline readers? I mean, who has the time to read the details, right? Well, if you want to be a successful investor, then remember this. Headlines are not your friend. When headlines are well-written, they can sum up a news story and let you know whether you want to read the story. But headlines have become a tool of the spin doctors. And I'm not talking about the band. You say one thing in the article, but you spin the story with the headline telling you often sometimes something completely different. In this case with Lucid, the headlines sound good. Best sales quarter ever. Yay. The future looks bright for our little Saudi Arabian EV company. Lucid produced 1,728 units in Q1. Wait, but that wasn't their best production quarter. Correct. Lucid actually produced more in Q4 of 2023, 2,391 units. But you just said that this was Lucid's best sales quarter ever. Right. Because when you cherry pick the data, you can spin it any way you want. The headlines could have read, Lucid production drops. But you'd have to ask yourself, why did the media run the story the other way? At first, I thought they just took the press release as Lucid wrote it, because that's what a lot of lazy journalists do. But then I went and read Lucid's press release, and it's actually quite matter of fact. Here it is, just stating both the production numbers of 1,728 units for Q1 and the delivery numbers of 1,967 for Q1. Now, the delivery number is the highest Lucid has made, breaking the previous record of 1,932 units from Q4 of 2022. So they beat it by... Uh, 35. 35. Nice. Come on, buddy. How many? I made uh, 85. So then why did most of the mainstream press outlets rosy up the headlines? Good question. Is it because Lucid goes to a lot of trouble to befriend journalists? I mean, as we talked about before, journalists are just people. If you offer journalists perks when they write things the way you want them to, things like trips to come visit your cars in really fancy places like Napa Valley, where they wine and dine you and make you feel really special, it makes it so that you have an incentive to say nice things about them or else you might lose those perks. But do you see we're losing sight of the big picture here? As investors, what do we care whether they sold 20 or 35 more vehicles than the quarter before? These little stupid headlines shouldn't matter to us, but we should look beyond to the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is that for all of 2023, Lucid only produced 8,428 vehicles and delivered only 6,001 units. Yeah, those numbers are very small, especially when you consider that these are the same scale numbers that they were doing back in 2022. The company is not growing. And what's really telling is that instead of them being production limited like Tesla has always been, this discrepancy of almost 2,500 vehicles is showing us that Lucid is demand limited. Because if you wanted a Lucid in Q1, they had plenty on hand to deliver to you. And we've been talking about this for years. Why would you want a Lucid if it costs more than a Tesla? You see, Lucid has this problem. And the problem is, if I'm a lifelong, let's say, Porsche owner, and I wanted to get into EVs, I'm very likely to buy whatever Porsche is offering. That makes sense. So a Porsche Taycan. Right. Okay. We see this a lot. Ford, GM, Subaru, VW, et cetera. They have tons of customers who feel really comfortable with their brand and who feel comfortable going down the street to their local car dealer if they're in the market for a new EV. And what do they drive off the lot? Something with the brand that they're familiar with. Case in point, first time I've ever seen a Subaru Solterra. Was in Vermont. In Vermont. <laughs> So one of the hardest things about getting a person into a Tesla is that they didn't grow up with the brand. The buying experience is completely different. The cars feel completely different inside. Heck, I even talked to a guy at an EV show the other day who said the reason why he didn't buy a Tesla and instead bought a Kia EV6 was because when he test drove a Model 3, he couldn't figure out how to get out of the car. And it freaked him out so much that he decided he wasn't ever going to buy a Tesla. He liked the buttons and the knobs where he was used to having them. Well, the problem with Lucid is that they went after the same customer who would feel comfortable in a Tesla. And that number is way smaller than the overall market of car buyers. So they basically pitted themselves against 
Tesla for buyers. And the Tesla buyers know that Teslas have a whole lot more to offer than Lucid's, namely supercharger network. They're cheaper, they're safer, they have full self-driving, just to name a few things. And why do you think Lucid CEO Peter Rawlinson gets paid so much relative to the value of his company? Could it be because his value is that he knows how to wine and dine the media and other investors with his posh accent? I mean, I've never seen a picture of Jim Cramer holding up a Motor Trend Award standing next to Elon Musk. Have you? I mean, Peter Rawlinson got paid $379 million in 2022. Hang on. How much did Mary Barra get paid, the CEO of GM? $34 million. So an order of magnitude less. Yes. How much did Ford CEO Jim Farley get paid? 18 million in 2022. Ouch. And just for some context, you might be like, well, Lucid must have made a lot of money. And so Peter Rawlinson got bonuses and stuff like that, right? Well, in just Q4 of 2023, in just one quarter, Lucid posted revenue of $157.2 million and a net loss of $653.8 million. Look, we all expect kind of low sales numbers as a company is starting out. Ramping up factory production is hard, but Lucid has been at this for quite a while now, and I think it's really troubling to see that Lucid is now able to make more cars than customers want to buy. And the only way that Lucid has been able to move these cars is with drastic price cuts, which means that it's going to take them longer to get to any kind of profitability. We believe there's a shift going on in the auto industry. We've been talking about this for years, but I think most people probably ignored us because it really didn't make any sense. Until today, that is. Because in the past few weeks, Tesla has released full self-driving supervised version 12.3. And I have to tell you, it is a game changer. This is the disruptive investing channel after all, and self-driving cars are about as disruptive as you can get. It's such a disruptive idea that try this out. Talk to 10 people in the next week about robo-taxis and self-driving cars. I want you to pay close attention to their faces when you ask them about this. I will bet on at least eight of those 10 faces, you get a look that would be similar to the look you would get if you asked them about putting a chip in your brain or traveling to a moon base. People just don't think that self-driving cars are a possibility. And so they don't know where to put that information in their brain. And when you don't know where to put information in your brain, what do you do with it? You change the subject. It's really uncomfortable to not understand something that part of you thinks you should understand, but you're a disruptive investor. Your job is to go deeper than the headlines. Your job is to understand what's coming and to get your money into those investments before it becomes obvious. Right now, for some investors, the obvious story is EVs are the future. Which means I guess I should start putting my money into cool EV startups like, ooh, Lucid. The really smart investor though, knows that it's much more than just EVs that is the future. It's fully autonomous self-driving robo-taxis. It's not going to be about car ownership. Although I get it, that's a really uncomfortable idea for most people because for over a hundred years, people have owned cars. It's the same uncomfortable feeling I'm sure a lot of people had back in the beginning of the 1900s when the thought occurred to them that they might not always own a horse. I mean, horses were practically members of their family. You built barns for them, you stacked hay for them, you put horseshoes on them, you cleaned up after them and you fed them. And now they were going to be replaced by this weird, loud, smelly automobile thing. But the smart investors saw that no matter how uncomfortable people would be, the automobile was the future and they invested accordingly. And the smart ones made a lot of money. Rockefeller. So don't be fooled by the spin. Know what questions to ask as a smart, disruptive investor. Sure, Lucid's are sexy all electric cars, but are they going to be the fully autonomous robo taxis of the future? And another thing, there are some car companies that are relatively small, they have relatively small sales, lucid level sales, and have been profitable. Mm -hmm. There have been those companies. And so I think that maybe Lucid's trying to trick you into being like, well, Lamborghini doesn't sell a lot of cars, but they're very profitable. Yeah, do you know how many Bugattis were sold in Europe last year? How many? 30. <laughs> still, still a profitable company. If you company. sell a car for a million or $2 million. That's, and that's great, okay, that's great. That is not what Lucid is doing. They are trying to ramp up, they're trying to follow in Tesla's footsteps. Tesla, by the way, Big risk, right? Back in, in 2012 when they're building the Model S and they're not making them profitably, big risk. But Tesla had a vision. No, really good point because if Tesla didn't exist, Lucid's could maybe sell for a million dollars each because there'd be nothing else like them. Sure. And they could uh, create a whole new market of electric cars and they could uh, work on making a new version of the Lucid, which would which, be even cheaper. Which is, I mean, I think what they were gonna do, it's just that Tesla foiled them. And I think that there was this idea 
that Lucid was going to beat Tesla because it was going to be a Tesla killer. You know what? I'm going to give them that. The Lucid Air Sapphire Super Duper Spiffin Amazing version that can beat a Tesla Model S Plaid. What planet are you on? There's there's one that goes faster than the Plaid, right? Uh, I don't think so. There's one that so. goes a little bit, maybe? I think it used to. And it's more luxurious and everything. Okay, let's say that that beats the Model S. Who cares about the Model S anymore? Hardly anybody. It is mainly marketing. The Model S is a big marketing thing. No, really good point. They it, The Model X outsold the Model S last quarter. And, and what really outsold the Model S last quarter? The Model Y yeah. and the Model 3. Because people can't afford well, Model S's. And, and that's completely normal. And that's what we knew from the beginning. That's well, what Tesla knew from the get beginning. get this. I mean, we're forgetting that the Cybertruck might outsell the Model S this quarter, Q2. And it probably will sell for more. So you have a luxury pickup truck that will outsell your luxury Model S. No one's talking about that story. And this brings us back to Lucid. This is kind of where we all get tricked. We get tricked into thinking that it's, it's oh, well, it, they're allowed to not sell that many cars because they're kind of like Ferrari. Or uh, they're allowed to not make money now because Tesla didn't make money when they first started out. I don't think that that thesis holds up anymore. Not at all. Because the point is, if you are, you know, everyone knows the words Lamborghini, Bugatti, and so forth, sure. because those brands have been around for so long. Loose, it's a new brand. And so, yes, they are competing with Tesla buyers. And so you've already got a very small group compared to Bugatti, the, the world that knows about Bugatti. Look, Lucid would be successful if they could sell their cars for a million dollars. They would make a lot of money. That's what they wanted to be doing. They didn't want to be price cutting and price cutting and slashing and getting down to this level. They just had to because they're competing with Tesla. Look, thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you find this kind of take on our investing valuable, then please consider joining our Patreon Investor Club so that you can get our weekly Investor Club bonus stories. Join us on exclusive live streams where we talk to founders and CEOs of companies that you probably never heard of, but probably will hear about in the years to come. Because as really smart investors know, getting in super early can really supercharge your investments. We'll see you next week on Disruptive Investing.